you really had to get to it. And it and so, uh, <laughs> Things that well, you think, why? <clears throat> Uh, yeah. Yeah. Think, Amaya, should we go ahead and get yeah, started? Yeah, I'm thinking we should. I just have a couple things. One, you know, I'm not clear. Amaya. Um, I wanted to just a reminder to get your raffle tickets for the super raffle coming up uh, for the members award appreciation. And, and then the website should be up today to make your votes for all the, uh, the nominees. And then also, if you check out our website, we have uh, member spotlight marketing each month. So the upcoming month is love and football. And so um, just check that out. Also want to introduce Brad Bailey as the president. If Brad wanted to say a couple words and then we'll let Kent take over. Perfect. I'm not going to say much because I'm looking forward to Kent's solepreneur thing and uh, the special guest that we have on here as well. So look forward to that. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's rock this year. That's what I say. Simple. And um, let's continue forward because a lot of these people I've already talked to and they've already heard me ramble. So I'm not going to ramble anymore. So uh, are doing Kent it's all yours. all yours all right thank you so welcome everybody I think I know most of you there might be a couple new people I'm Kent Smith and uh, one of the organizers of this group uh, we're a group for businesses of one so we try to keep our topics to things that are pertinent for people who are just running their own business don't have a staff trying to do things on your own hopefully we can do some knowledge sharing and help each other uh, improve in our businesses if you uh, are a first timer or folks want to just share their contact stuff, please do that in the chat. We don't do introductions. This isn't a networking event, but we certainly want everybody to have a chance to uh, introduce yourself and uh, you can do that via the chat. Um, one more announcement I will add is our February solopreneur meeting is the 25th. So you can put that in your calendar now. It's tax planning. <clears throat> so we will have a uh, couple of accountants on who are going to speak specifically to tax planning when you're a business of one, which my experience talking to others who are business of one, there is no tax going on for your business. You're just doing your own personal stuff and let it fall where it does. So we'll all learn if that's a bad strategy or if maybe we should do something <laughs> different in February. Um, so anyway, this meeting is to talk about uh, um, working from home, this pandemic, the Groundhog's Day is how somebody described it to me. It's just painful. Every day is the same. Ah, I'm not moving. I don't get out. So we're going to cover two topics, and we've got two guests on for that. We have uh, Jason Ness from uh, Ness Psychological Services, and then Sandy Smith, my wife from Pulsation Yoga. And they will each take about half of our time and help guide us. This is not just a talking head. This is everybody sharing. But um, we'll talk about the physical part of you know, we're all not moving less, what we can do. And then we can talk about the mental part of trying to deal with working from home during a pandemic. So if everybody's okay, I was going to ask Sandy, if I could ask you to kick things off, we'll talk about the physical part of it first. Sure, sure. So one of the, um, one of the reasons that I asked Kent if I could go first when he asked if I cared, <laughs> besides one, just being able to relax and think about what Jason is saying when he speaks, is also that in yoga, one of the things that we do is we move the body first so that we can sit down and concentrate. And so if you really think of um, your movement that way, is that when you move well, you help your body prepare for sitting and doing the work that you wanna be able to do. So a couple of tips, um, I kept trying to, you know, make them fit into like five tips for, you know, physical well-being when you're working at home and that wasn't working. So we're just gonna go with six tips, all right? So the first one is to really work to make a regular sleep-wake cycle, which for a lot of us right now, we talk about it being Groundhog's Day, or it's like vacation. And Kent and I will do this too, where we're like, you want to watch one more show, right? And you know, they had that good cliffhanger. And then it's hard to get out of bed in the morning. And if you don't have a commute that you're used to having, and maybe you can just pull a hat on your head, Derek's like, I'm up at five, it doesn't matter. Um, but you know, for many of us, if we're not dealing with those newborns, then it's that idea of how do I stay on a, a regular rhythm with my body? And our bodies like that. They like things to stay the same. So a regular sleep-wake cycle, number one, huge to set up the next day. Um, number two, enjoy, and note, note that word, enjoy at least 30 minutes of movement daily. 
So find something you like to do. Some of you might like to just turn on the radio and dance. Some of you might, you know, like to do a yoga class. Some of you might like to do cardio. Um, Cat likes to get up and go row in the basement, you know, so sorry, I might be sharing too much, honey. Um, but find something mute and make, mute, mute, mute. <laughs> find something that you enjoy. That's the key because you want to get up, then you want to go do it. And if it's at least 30 minutes daily, that's really going to help set you up for a strong day. This other one is maybe going to seem weird, but strive for five to seven servings of veggies and fruit daily. If you're getting in five to seven servings of vegetables and fruit, and how much is that? So a leafy vegetable, it's a cup. If you have salad, it's a cup. If it's not a leafy vegetable, it's a half a cup, all right? Strive for five to seven servings. And if you are getting those in each day with two to three servings of lean protein, there's not gonna be a whole lot of room for all that other weird snacking that goes on. Your stomach's gonna be satisfied and you're gonna be able to um, concentrate on what you're doing as well as not have the weight creep. Um, another one that's kind of tied along with that, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. <laughs> so I can't say that enough. A lot of us have trained ourselves to have our water bottles. Yeah, I need Serena here to have our water bottles, but do you empty that water bottle throughout the day? So whether your bottle is marked or whether you just tell yourself, hey, I get up in the morning and I have a good steep swig, you know, and then with every meal, I drink at least four ounces, set some parameters for yourself. So you're hydrating regularly. Um, minimizing... Does it count if I'm doing the party pouch that Nancy has behind her? Is that <laughs> hydrating? That's for later. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so that idea of minimizing the caffeine, a lot of times when we start to get drowsy at our desk, it has nothing to do with being tired or needing caffeine. Or the other thing that we do is I think I'll go eat something. Uh, instead, it's that we're getting hydrated or next tip, breathe deeply. Look up frequently and breathe deeply. Most of us, as we're working at our desk, we start to do this. We curl over, we're not breathing, we're not using our lungs, right? Which right away our brain starts to shut down, right? I'll let Jason talk more about that. Um, and that, and also then we're not prepared. And so we're telling our, our entire body that we're relaxing, we're getting ready to go to sleep. When we wanna be alert, we wanna be focused. So hydrating, nice, nice uh, posture and deep, deep breaths can help you there. So if you just every you know, 20, 30 minutes, uh, maybe as you finish a paragraph or as you're working on something, make certain that you look up, look across the way, focus your eyes on something distant, blink fully. A lot of eye doctors tell us that we don't blink fully, which is bad for our eyes. Our eyes get dry and we feel tired, get headaches. It's not a good thing. So blink fully and then take three full deep breaths in and out. All right, getting that air all the way moving. And along with that, move five to 10 minutes every hour. You know, you've probably all heard that sleeping or sleeping, sitting is the new smoking. And um, it's that idea of even if you get up and do your 30 minutes of exercise or movement daily, maybe you go out for a walk and then you sit all day, it's really bad for us. So we really want to every hour, and if you think about it that way, an hour has passed, I'm going to get up, maybe go to the washroom, get a drink, take my deep breaths, and then come back and sit down. You will find that you're more refreshed. Now, the trick there is not getting up and going to the refrigerator, right? So if you go to the refrigerator, make certain that you have it stacked, uh, stocked with healthy snacks. All right. So like I said, talking in, or um, this, this thing, the things that we're doing with our body are to get us ready to be able to concentrate and work. Sometimes we just need to move the body. And so I wanted to be able to show you at your desk some movement and stretches that you can do just right there at your desk to help you. So I'm gonna move away from this and go to my secret hidden desk chair here that hopefully we're all in an ergonomically correct chair and not sitting on the kitchen floor or something while we are um, working, all right? I've seen all sorts of interesting, this is my setup. I'm gonna take my jacket off just so you can see the movement. And so what I'd like you to do is uh, come so that your back is away from the back of your chair. All right, so give yourself a little bit of space. 
and then lift up through the heart and think about taking your shoulders. I like to say east and west. So away from each other, drawing the shoulder blades onto the back. And yeah, if you want to, if you feel silly and you want to turn your, your <laughs> camera off, you can. It's fun for me if you leave it on so I can see how folks are doing and, and if, I, if there's anything I need to do to, to help you out. And then um, to begin, for many of us, when we're typing and working, our wrists just get tired. Those wrists need the synovial fluid moving in them. So just shake your hand like you're trying to uh, dry off that Polaroid picture, right? If you've got loose rings and you're doing this right, you might lose your rings. So you really wanna get those rubbery hands going. And that sensation alone for many of us will wake up the wrists. From here, you can let the wrists stop and take your right arm straight out in front and then flip the palm skyward. Take the fingers towards the floor now and reach over with the other hand, with your other hand placed on the, the hand coming down towards the ground so that you're not hyperextending your fingers. So get the whole, the palm and the root of the fingers. Start to pull the fingers back towards your heart. Don't hyperextend your elbow. If you're like me, you can keep a slight bend in and then release, flip the hand up and pull the wrist the opposite direction. And I'll switch sides here so I can do the other arm. When you're ready, just let that hand drop. You might shake that wrist a little bit again. Take that left arm out now, palm up, take the palm out away from you, fingers towards the floor. Gently start to pull that palm back. And when you're ready, you can flip that around and pull the fingers back again. Just stretching those hands out that can get really sore and then shake the wrists one more time. Now from here, bring your hands in close to your heart. So you're going to say a prayer. Uncross your legs if they're crossed, clasp your hands and flip the palm out away from you. So as though like guys cracking your knuckles, right? Again, don't hyperextend the elbows. So take them out as far as you can without hyperextending and then draw the shoulder blades back onto the back. So if you can, push the arms out and away and then pull the shoulder blades back and in. Keep the shoulders there as you strive to rotate the arms overhead. Try here, for many of us, we get up there by letting the belly go. So try to pull the rib cage down towards the hips and stretch towards the sky. You can take a few deep breaths in and out here as you do this. and then release the clasp and grasp opposite elbows. Now, as you hold on to the elbows, try to pull your shoulder blades east and west again. So you're bursting the shoulder blades. Try to keep the arms over the head, window framing out your head as you breathe here. Again, notice the back, there's that tendency to curl the back, pull the ribs down so you're even using the core. And then release the hands and let one hand, let your left hand come to your right knee. Your right hand is gonna reach back and find something on your chair, all right? So anything you can find is great. Then lift up through your heart, using the back of your chair and your right leg, twist. So we're really pushing that left hip down and we're twisting to the right. We're relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the neck. Don't yank your head around to the back. Let the neck remain nice and neutral here. Unwind, coming back through the center. Take those arms back up overhead, making your clasp, pressing up towards the sky. Then release the hands, grabbing the elbows, pulling the shoulders apart. Take a few breaths in and out. When you're ready, twist to your left and let your hands float down. So again, find the back of that chair, anything you can find. Right hand comes down maybe to the outer knee, lift through the heart. And then as I press into the chair with my back hand, I can really get a nice twist. In fact, the chair can help you kind of over crank, so be careful. Check in on the shoulders, I'm hunching mine. Try to relax your shoulders, relax your neck. And then come back through. All right, hands come to the knees. We're gonna wake up the spine and the neck now. So, and I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see. You wanna make certain that you've got clearance from the back of your chair. This is a seated cat cow. So hands press on the knees, 
press your spine towards the back of your chair, rolling the shoulders forward as you exhale. Pull in through that belly. Now, as you inhale, pull on the knees, lift through the heart and drive your gaze upward. Relax the shoulder blades down the back. Keep going, doing at least three more of these, really trying to roll and get in to the back and the spine. And when you have completed those, you can come back to a nice neutral spine. I'm gonna swing around again so we can see where we're headed. Before we move completely out of the chair, I want you to take your right arm up and over finding your left ear. Relax your right shoulder down and you can take your left arm out to the side so that the chair holds that left arm. Then gently draw your right ear towards your right shoulder. Now, if you want more sensation, you can begin to press the left ear to the left hand. And then release. And let's wake up the other side of the neck. So the right arm comes down, the left arm comes up and over, finding that right ear. Shrug the left shoulder towards the floor. The left ear starts to search for that left shoulder. It shouldn't find it. <laughs> When you're ready, if you want more sensation, begin to press the right ear back into the left hand. I like this stretch because you're in control of how much sensation you get. And then you can release, let the hands come down. Now, without touching your chair, can you plant your feet, bring your hands together at your heart and rise up? If that's easy for you, your practice can move to taking one foot off the floor and rising up without using that leg. And you can do that a couple of different times. All right, so extending one leg out, planting the other foot, trying not to drop that heel down. A lot of us wanna drop that heel and lift. So really getting into those gluteal muscles in the back of the body, then inhale, stand up, stretch all the way up in front of your chair. Clasp your hands, plant your left foot, stretch to your right. Inhale all the way back up. And as you exhale, stretch over to your left. Inhale, coming all the way back up and exhale your hands down to your heart. Roll the shoulders out. And I'm going to turn my chair. You can use your desk or a wall, whichever is better for you. Uh, notice I've got my chair on my mat trying to keep the, the rolly wheels from rolling. You want something that won't move. We're going to do a down dog using our desk, a wall, or our chair. So you step your feet out away from your desk and plant your hands shoulder distance or wider on your desk. Then with your legs straight, press your hips back behind you and walk your upper body down in line so your ears line up with your arms. Draw the shoulder blades on the back, pull the ribs towards the hips and lift through your sit bones. Breathe here at least three to five nice deep breaths. And then slowly press the hands into the desk, rising up, walking your feet back in, and you can turn away from your desk. We'll end everything with a forward fold. So inhale, reaching all the way up, exhale, and you're gonna bend at the waist. So notice I'm not curling my spine. I am pressing over and folding. So for some of us, it'll be right here is what's comfortable. For others, we're gonna bend the knee and we're comfortable coming all the way down then. If you can get this inversion in, letting your head relax towards the floor and letting the shoulders relax and hang nice and easily, sit bones are lifting, head is dropping. This is great to just kind of release that, get that blood flowing in a little bit different way than we're used to. Bring your hands up to your shins, inhale, rise up with a nice flat back and then bring your hands to your hips, bend your knees and rise all the way up. And exhale, hands to heart, and you're ready to move on. So we did that in, what, about 10, 12 minutes? So you can see a short break can really help you to be ready to move on with the rest of your day. So I was curious, what are some stretches or things that you guys do already at your desk or in your day to try to help?
I think you can unmute yourself, can you? I have them an app when they download it. Um, and it's like, it gives you like eight minute stretches. It's really easy to get through. Um, and it helps a lot just because it's kind of gives you something to do. It's hard for me to stretch. Well, especially at my desk when I don't really know what to do. So the app is nice because it kind of gives you that that procedure to follow, which I kind of need to actually get it <laughs> to, to make it happen. Yeah, it is great to have something, especially if you can just play it and they guide you through it. Yeah, it counts um, it and tells you go to the next right. one, that type of thing. And what was the name of that? Um, it is... Oh, stretching exercise. Oh. It's called stretching exercise, but I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay. Aptly cool. named. <laughs> and it's Aptly it's named, yeah. it's free too, so that's not a bad thing either. They have some upgrades, no. but the, the regular ones are fine. Nice. Oh, I'll go and just run up and down my stairs a couple times. Oh, I He's love never it. Sick. There's the runner. <laughs> <laughs> Jory, what about you? I feel so relaxed doing this. <sighs> <laughs> I love it. Good. <laughs> what about you, Jory? So my daughter, who's in high school, mind you, who's, you know, very into, you know, taking care of yourself. She gave me this sign that says the rules of threes say, I am calm, cool, and collected three times in your head and out loud. Two, breathe and repeat three times, allow breath to flow through the diaphragm. And she gave me a whole picture with lungs and everything. And then third step, repeat step one, you can do this, return happily. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. Yeah, I know um, a, kind, a loving kindness meditation. We work a lot here with Bhante Sujatha from the Blue Lotus Temple. and. Um, I always love, I think it's very, um, very beautiful, but as you're trying to breathe, uh, a nice mantra to remember is comes from that loving kindness and it's just breathing in, may I be well, breathe out, may I be peaceful, breathe in, may I be happy. And you can keep breathing that way and extend that as far out as, as you like. You can, you know, first extend it to yourself and then maybe someone in your sphere that you're worried about. And then maybe someone who you just know needs loving care, um, you know, out to the entire world. May we all be happy. May we all be well. May we all be peaceful, um, which does a, a great thing to calm the mind. What else? Anyone else? Uh, we have a, we have one of our dogs that's having some issues. So I get to carry a 25 pound bull, uh, French bulldog up and down the stairs multiple times a day, so. <laughs> so you get your weights in. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love it, great, great. Well, if you guys ever need, if you need any help, you know, um, I both as co-owner of Pulsation Yoga and I also am a weight loss coach. And so if you need any ideas or suggestions, I always do complimentary calls and I'd love to talk to you guys as chamber members. And if I can, you know, give you a few suggestions and help you tweak your routine let me know because I would love to do that. That's, that's what I live for is to have people say, oh, that felt so good. So I have a um, question, Sandy. Sure. On the, on the water thing, you know, I've read all different kinds of things like you're supposed to drink half your weight or whatever. Do you have general guidelines for how much? And does coffee you know, count? <laughs> so the interesting thing about coffee, the studies on that have, have changed a little bit. And, you know, they used to say, don't count anything caffeinated. And um, the most recent things that I've seen say, if you're used to being caffeinated, then you can count caffeinated. I prefer not to with my clients because I prefer to get them off caffeine. So if you're drinking decaf coffee, then sure, count that. Um, but challenge yourself if you're drinking caffeinated to try to reduce the caffeine and increase. So infused waters are a great way to do that. Um, some folks like seltzer waters, uh, lots of different things like that. So how much? That's a big question that we get. And again, um, first I would say, no, see what you're doing now. Almost all of us are not, unless you've been focusing on this, all, almost all of us are not hydrating enough. 
and simply try to increase it from there. They generally say six to eight, eight ounce glasses. So you can do the math there, right? Um, and I would say probably the ideal is that half your body weight in ounces. Now that's a lot of water. That's also gonna depend on your health, the temperature outside, how much you're exercising, right? How so if you're in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I have some teachers that are clients and they're like, Sandy, if I drink that much water, I can't, I can't, I can't leave Zoom, you know? <laughs> so, um, so you have to tailor that, but yeah. Okay, thanks. I have a, I bought my wife a really cool bottle for Christmas um, and it has kind of the lines on it, but it has time. So for the morning, it has times you should be here, here, here. And then at the bottom, it says fill it up. And then on the, the right side, it's. Um, well, I have that. I'm drinking. I've been trying to drink 100 ounces of water a day, which is outrageous. Um, yeah. It's it my goal, but I have like those lines where it's like 8 a.m., you know, 10 a.m., 12 p.m. Yeah. goes throughout the whole day. It kind of helps me keep on track and I know mm -hmm. where I'm at for the day. Rarely do I make it to 100 ounces. <laughs> That's a yeah. lot of water. <laughs> so Carrying that's kind of like weightlifting. <laughs> <laughs> um, and honestly, I think that one of the biggest things is really just to listen to your bodily cues because often by the time that we realize we're thirsty, we're slightly dehydrated. And so, you know, trying to stay ahead of it. I have a question on carbonated. Uh, beverages. I had heard that the carbonation doesn't really count in the hydration, but you mentioned seltzer waters. And I'm not yeah. talking about like diet soda so much as like maybe like tonic or club right. soda or. Honestly, the, the majority of the time we're just trying to get clients to drink more. So if you're, if you're an elite athlete or if you've got specific goals for your body, then you might start to think, or if it, bothers your digestion. That's the other big thing, right? Um, but assuming you tolerate it well, and you're just a normal, happy human trying to get more hydration, and that gets you to drink it, go for it. Anything else? Any other questions, thoughts, tips for others? I think it might be time that we move on to uh, the other half of our agenda here for today. I want to welcome, there's uh, some folks who got in a little bit late. Welcome, welcome. Sorry you missed all the uh, all of us moving, doing our chair yoga or whatever. But we talked about the physical part of dealing with working from home and Jason's going to help us with the ah, mental uh, uh, piece of that. So thanks, Sandy. We'll turn it over to Jason. Thanks, Sandy. That was great stretching. It just feels good. Yeah, thanks, Kent. Uh, Sandy, that I want to echo that as well. That was awesome. Uh, I, I want to be able to build off of what you just said. I think that framework which you provided everybody about, you know, moving well, hydrating well, eating well, it all leads to thinking well. You follow the science, not only during COVID and, you know, when you have to do the right things, mask wearing, social distancing, those types of things, but that you follow the science as well that helps you think well. And so moving well is certainly part of that. And those are some of the components that, you know, I integrate into uh, in working with my clients as well. So uh, it was great hearing you say that. And then the last thing on the water piece, working with athletes, we always say a minimum of 40 ounces. Obviously it depends on the individual, but we don't want to say too much like a hundred ounces because no one will do it. They'll never do it. Right. So we always try to keep our habits tiny, you know, something manageable that they can control. And then certainly not drinking water after five o'clock, you'll be up all night because you'll disrupt that sleep you were talking about because mm -hmm. uh, you'll be going to the bathroom all night. So you got to, you got to time it as well. Uh, but sleeping is so critical as well. In fact, that's one of the first things that we ask about and talk about is sleep wake cycle. Because if you again, look into the science that leads to depression, anxiety, irritability, moodiness, it affects your focus, concentration. So sleep is hypercritical. Uh, so Sandy's so appreciative of you setting that up like that. Um, and also I appreciate Kent and, and the chamber setting this up because how do you do this alone? You guys are you know, working alone, you're in your businesses, sometimes you're not connected uh, as much as you'd like to be. Uh, but I think one of the main things is doing what you're doing right now is really developing a community of uh, individuals that are 
can rely and lean on each other, you know, for support, for expertise, for ins insight. So uh, that's a really cool thing too. Um, just a little brief introduction with about myself. Uh, by training and trade, I'm a clinical psychologist. I work with folks from five to 65. Uh, my typical day, I, every 45 minutes, uh, somebody else is walking in with, with very different circumstances, you know, and um, I, it, it's really a pleasure working in this community. It's been great. And it's really launching a business about two years ago, right before a pandemic. Uh, I didn't have timing. <laughs> I look back, it's like the timing could not have been better, I think, for the community or for, or, or for myself and, you know, and helping. But it's interesting. Uh, the, the clients that come in on the mental side, it, things can get very overwhelming. And Kent, I know when you started off the, you know, the, the, the Zoom session, you're talking about Groundhog Day and Every, there's this learned helplessness and, you know, you know, I, I think the antidotes to combat that type of thinking, you know, really it, it relies on relies on several different things, but I think hope and optimism, you know, um, a lot of my clients come in they're they're stuck, you know, in whatever circumstance they may be in, they need to cognitively reframe, uh, be challenged you know, maybe there's some missing things and structures and routines in their day that have fallen apart because of COVID. But when you look at the center of this, it's how hopeful they are and how optimistic. Uh, Kent, you were describing a, a pessimistic point of view of like, oh God, this is the worst, you know, uh, who knows what, what else is coming down the road. But we really wanna reframe that. And I think that is extremely beneficial because even though this is very difficult for a lot of people, you know, isolation, their businesses, their families, you, optimism is the belief that something good is about to happen. You know, it's right around the corner and you have to believe that and you have to be hopeful. Uh, and if you look at all the science again, whether it's positive psychology, Marty Seligman is great. He's out of Penn University. Um, and he has a lot of research behind that. And just, you know, just in terms of who, who's more successful, who survives, you know, who, you know, who, what is, what are the characteristics that individual has? And typically it is the optimism and the hope. And I think also when you look at this and in, in working with my clients and it work, when I spend time, it's really trying to understand what's a hundred percent under your control. Um, many people come in with all of these external factors and things that are going wrong and it creates a significant amount of anxiety for them. But these are all factors that are outside of their control. So what we, what I would suggest for anybody, whether it's in their business, um, you know, their personal life and relationships, you know, maintain those, con that those connections, but also just focusing on what is 100% under your control. Those are your thoughts, you know, I, sometimes I get some pushback on that, but your thoughts are 100% under your control. Your actions are your attitude and certainly your effort. And so that framework, when you can just start simple like that, whether that's just as an individual, uh, regard, you know, what, as your role as a parent, you know, a, a coach, a teacher, a uh, business owner, if you could focus in on those things, that does help you know, kind of reframe and get you moving in a more positive, optimistic manner. And it, you know, I, and I feel like that to me develops resilience as well. Um, Cause at the center of the, the, those thoughts of control is resilience. And that's how you, that's how you develop it. And, um, you know, recently I've been working a lot with athletes and the concept of resilience and control comes up quite a bit and focus and attention. What do you focus in on the things that you can control? So there's a lot of exercises and things that we do and activities. Um, you know, it, in, I'll share one that, that I do, a practice that I have, that I use, that this pandemic has really reinforced for me. And I've really doubled down on it because I, I, I have found it so helpful. And remembering that, you know, not only, you know, Sandy showed us, you know, how stretching muscles in the body is so helpful, but if you could remind yourself that your mind is a muscle, and the more that you use it, and the more that you can quiet it down and 
be able to sit with stillness. And I think that's what Sandy was talking a little bit about as well. Uh, that's why I love the, you know, with yoga or meditation or breathing, any, any types of these things that you can incorporate. But um, in the morning, if you can just wake up and breathe, you know, really to activate the mind, you know, activate your body when you wake up and really, and then really with an extended exhale, you know, um, the first thing you do, and you can do that three or four times. And I think the second thing to help foster that optimism and hopefulness, uh, not learned helplessness, but learned hope, hopefulness is really start thoughts of gratitude. You know, uh, things that you're thankful for, things that you're appreciative of. Uh, I think if you talk to a lot of folks, um, you know, they, they get up in the morning, they're, they're grateful for that. They're grateful, you know, that their kids are healthy. They're grateful that their family is doing well. They're grateful for all those things. And I think that sets the tone. Um, and then the third thing, you know, certainly there's goals. People have tasks each day. But I also ask people to think about their intentions for the day. How are they going to feel that day? How are they going to show up with other people that day? Are they going to be moody? Are they going to be grouchy? Are they going to be irritable? Think about your businesses. How are you going to show up and interface with your uh, customers? Um, and so in the morning, I'll ask them, hey, kind of map out your day and connect your intentions with those activities that you're going to uh, be part of that day. And really the fourth thing that I would say is just kind of be where you're at, you know, um, where your feet are at. You know, that's a little bit zen. You know, I'm incorporating a lot of these things. Uh, I guess as I get a little bit older, uh, and I, I, I think a lot of the Eastern philosophy is, is wonderful of just being present in the here and now. And I think that helps quiet the mind quite a bit. Um, so, it, and, and then if you start your day and you can win the morning and what Sandy was doing there earlier in the beginning of this session, I think really, if you can incorporate that in the morning and kind of start your day off on the right foot, if you win that morning, I'm telling you, the rest of the day kind of falls into place. And I think what happens with people, they get their days, and I'm seeing this a lot, especially with my young adults. They're up till two, three, four, five in the morning on Netflix, social media. Our brains aren't wired for this. And then their days are flipped. They're waking up at 11, 12. Then they're in my office asking me why they're anxious, depressed, and they're, they're, you know, they, you know, they can't relate to people and they're yelling for, you know, it, they're not regulated. So um, I think winning the morning, if I was also, if there's any tips here, I, that's kind of like a term I use. Um, I use it with my, again, with my athletes, they like training and winning, you know, that's kind of their, the kind of, I'll never say meditation. I'll say mindfulness training because uh, meditation, everyone pushes back because it doesn't, I think initially anyways, that's been my experience. But if you kind of reframe it, uh, people are a little bit more receptive to that. Um, so I, you know, I, I just said a lot. I also want to open it up to questions and, you know, experiences that you've had uh, that's been successful for you or any questions you had for me and kind of how to build upon uh, what you're doing already at home. Or if there's any gaps, if you have any questions about that, I can be helpful. So um I'll kind of, you know, uh, I'll leave it open, you know, to Kent, if you want to facilitate that. Yeah, the, well, there was one that we had in the chat. Somebody asked about if you could talk more about learned helplessness. I think it was a phrase that may not be familiar to everybody. Oh, yeah. You know what? I, I'm so, you know what? Sometimes I, I could get academic and, you know, I throw some phrases out there that I feel are. Uh, but learned helplessness really is the belief that if something's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong. You know, you you almost like, it's like the universe. If you, you put out there like, Hey, I'm going to fail. This is not going to work out. Or you have the quality of your inner thoughts are very uh, toxic that I'm not good enough. I'm not successful enough. I'm not fast enough. I don't belong here. It, all of a sudden those thoughts, the tone and content of your inner thoughts start creating a narrative in your head and you, it becomes why even try, you become very helpless. And there's regions in the brain, I think by, through, again, through all the science these days and our uh, neuroimaging and the neuroscience is that you can literally see your brain change. You can see a learned helplessness brain. And then I talked about hopefulness and you can see more of the areas in your um, kind of medial frontal cortex change 
um, and be malleable and create new pathways, just the way you think and the way you talk to yourself. I had a client last night that told me that he's a bully to himself. He literally, because I asked him, I said, would you ever talk to somebody else the way you talk to yourself? He goes, no. He's like, I, I'm like a bully to myself. I go, that's perfect. And I go, do you like bullies? He's like, no. I said, why are you a bully to yourself? So we have to be very aware of what we're, and all, this all starts with awareness, kind of the, what, what's happening in between our ears, and it takes practice. I think yoga, meditation, breathing helps us get the body uh, in, a, in a place where um, we can pay attention to our inner thoughts. Because listen, those are the thoughts between our ears. We're going to have that till our last breath, you know, and if the quality of our thinking is poor, it leads to that helplessness. So that's kind of a long winded response to your question, Kent. But I think it's a very important distinction uh, in one that if we can notice uh, patterns in ourselves or patterns in others that are of loved ones, um, we can interrupt and it, it just takes time and it takes attention and focus to be able to do that. Great, <clears throat> thanks. Anyone else have a question or comment or anything you'd like to share? Uh oh, crickets, crickets. Now it's Sandy, wait time. Go ahead. I, I wanted to um, leave with kind of a closing thought. One of the things, one of the quotes that I really like. We're liked, not closing yet. No, 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 for, for me. One of the uh, things that I like to, hopefully it will stimulate some conversation, um, is that uh, Mahatma Gandhi made a statement that true happiness is when what you think, what you say, and what you do are all in harmony. And I think as solopreneurs or close to solopreneurs, I have two other partners, um, that hopefully we're all in a situation where we've chosen this. These are things that we're passionate about that we're doing. And so then when we choose to do things, whether it's what we eat to fuel our body, whether it's the movement we take to take care of that body, um, or whether it's the thoughts that we feed ourselves internally, when those all are aligned, we not only will find happiness, but we will then be able to translate that into our business lives, into our personal lives. You know, it, it's got a great spillover effect. And um, so that's just something that really resonates with me when I find that I'm getting into that learned helplessness mode of, oh, here we go again, right? And, or thinking, why am I staying up so late? Um, that, that thinking about what am I doing and trying to bring those things all in harmony. I don't know if that resonates or not with anyone. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna say, I, I was gonna say, I think, I think it definitely does, Sandy. And for me, especially all of us, for the most part, you know, we're, we're on our own doing our business thing, but also trying to balance life with our businesses succeeding and we have our failures or at least our times that we're down on ourselves, kind of our bully to ourself, like Jason said. Um, but I like to look back, there's this, I have a list somewhere and it's like 50 great people and kind of all their failures before they succeeded. Um, and it's kind of nice to look at like Colonel Sanders, 900 places turned them down before you know, someone actually took his recipe or there, there's a lot of them on there. Um, but it really is that mindset of believing in what you can do, you know, look at Bill Gates, um, Steve Jobs, again, they had many failures before their products or their ideas took off. Um, but it was everything being focused and, and staying positive and really, um, really aiming towards that goal. So I think the mental side while we sometimes forget it since we have so many things going on in life, whether it's kids or jobs or maybe two jobs or family issues, um, it, it really is a, a big thing to focus on. So I Victor, have a did you have something to add? I think you were trying to get in there earlier. Me? Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say that sometimes I think we're so eager 
to be successful in our businesses and make sure that we're constantly doing the best for our clients and everything that we can do to make everything the best for them. But then we forget about ourselves. <laughs> you know, that sometimes you need to step back and focus on yourself because if you're not, you know, kind of like your own worst critic or uh, bullying yourself, then um, if you're not in a good positive frame of mind, that sometimes comes across in, in your business. And so I think that uh, we need to make sure that we take care of ourselves too, right? Yep. Self-care, right? I have a question. Um, I have a question for Jason. So I just wondered if you have any tips, like Sandy said, you know, you know, periodically, you know, through the day, get up and walk or something. Because I feel like when you're owning your own business, there's like always so many lists and, and or you're always have some kind of input. You're never like turning everything off for, you know, a period of time. And Sometimes I have to just like, you know, you get to the end of the day and you're just like, wow, you know, I'm just like, ah, all day. Yeah. yeah you know, I, I think you got to be, that's a good question. I think you have to be very creative with your day, especially during a pandemic. I mean, cause every day become very, it becomes very much of a routine and, and very mundane. You have to be very creative and very, very active in creating a day that, you know, will bring some novelty and, you know, some positivity to it. Um, you know, I think the stretching is always a great thing. Um, and I, I'm a big believer in, you know, uh, mindfulness meditation. Uh, I believe it can either be single point meditation, really, where you're focusing on a breath, an image, you know, maybe there's a mantra, you know, I, I think Sandy mentioned, may I be well, or may you be well, that loving kindness uh, meditation piece. Um, or it's, you know, journaling is a big uh, piece I think a lot of my clients have got into that are very successful that they have found I think initially they're a little bit resistant but developing new habits uh, such as journaling I think you know in the morning where you can really you can literally write out kind of you know one what's your day going to be like write your intentions you know how you're going to feel how you're going to show up how you're going to be your best self and just kind of and just write you know you're not writing for publication um, and a lot of times when people are in a very stressful uh, situations or they're in crisis, you know, they, if they can write out, because when you're writing it, you have to think, you know, you just can't write. And I wouldn't say on a keyboard, I, I think writing cursively or <laughs> printing it out is probably key if you have a notebook. And I think just kind of logging your moods and in naming them and being more mindful of the conditions where you're operating best and being mindful of the triggers and cues in the environment that may, um, you know, escalate anxiety and such. But I think breathing, uh, mindfulness meditation, uh, my, my mindfulness training is great. I think journaling, writing is a, is a very good thing. But I also think just doing things you enjoy. You know, you can walk at Cuba Marsh. You know, you can listen. I think a thing that I developed over the pandemic that I have really enjoyed is I've gotten into a lot of podcasts. Um, I'm not as connected with a lot of my mentors as I used to be uh, with the groups that we'd sit around, have coffee or, you know, maybe one of the local establishments and just talk. But the podcast is a great way. I, there's several of them. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Daily Stoic. Um, I love Tim Ferriss's podcasts. Uh, Michael Gervais um, is, is excellent. He's a sports clinical psychologist. So I, his ideas and his guests are really you know, the, the, it's, it, it's very relevant to me. Uh, and so, and then like today I listened to, it's funny, I listened to the American Psychological Association. They were interviewing Marty Seligman, the, the, the godfather of positive psychology, just on, um, and he's like 80 some years old. So it was great to kind of see these uh, huge figures in the field because you don't know how much longer they're going to be around, kind of speak to the research and how it's evolved over the years. So, I, you know, again, it's, it's a, there's multiple ways you can look at it, but I think having fun and trying to be creative that way. Um, I know for us, we bought a puppy over the pandemic. We're one of those uh, people. Uh, my kids love it. And I, I, I don't really love it when it's 15 below zero, but, uh, and I'm walking him, but, you know, we, we, we kind of mixed it up. And I think, you know, kind of in, in organizing your day and week for things to look forward to towards the end. Uh, whether that's a dinner or taking something out or going somewhere um, is great. And I, I, I'm a big 
fan of walking as well. I think when you walk, you think, you know, and there's a peacefulness there. And you, again, you have Cuba Marsh, you have, I think it's at Heron over on, you know, in Long Grove. Um, you know, I don't like the streets really. <laughs> I, I don't trust cars, but I think, you know, especially if you're kind of out, you know, but I, I think that's a great way. And, you know, connecting with others like this. Jason, I heard too that somebody, and I can't remember who it was that walking plus looking straight has an effect on your brain too, because it's that motion gait that you have that works back in balance. If you're walking and looking straight, that you know, I'm sure that's true, but I would say also the quality of your inner thoughts as you're walking, you know, whether you're, you know, I, I would assume you kind of, you know, I think looking straight and looking outward is that you're more aware of, you know, visuals, sounds, you know, uh, Lance. Don't go for a walk with your husband and talk about finances. That kind of. No, well, I, well, again, that's. <laughs> okay. Hey, okay, enough. <laughs> to each his own. But I, 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 listen, I think sometimes a little bit of solitude and walking to gather yourself and, and just kind of reconnect with what's important in your life and reframe and your priorities and kind of understand what's 100% under your control. Um, and then just being able to show up the best that you can. And, you know, you're not going to be perfect, you know, but I think consistency over time. Um, yeah, but yeah, the, you don't want to have toxic inner thoughts while you're walking. That's not good. You may walk into traffic. That's not a good thing. You mentioned, Jason, that a lot of times uh, folks initially are resistant to the idea of meditation. And um, for those folks, two things you can think about. One is, is a book that I think is really great is uh, Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics. Uh, is Dan Harris. A great book. Yeah, with Dan Harris. Um, so if you think I truly want to get into meditation, but I'm not, not certain how. Um, the other one is that if you enjoy walking and you were talking about the quality of your inner thoughts as you walk, there is a form of meditation that is a mindfulness meditation where your job quote unquote, to speak of as you walk is solely to pay attention to what is happening around you. So the sound of the ground under your feet, mm -hmm. um, maybe how your shoes feel on your feet, the rustle of the leaves in the tree, you know, where the sunlight is shining and where it is not. It's a way to release the brain to let yourself relax. Um, I loved Jason used to quote, and you can't see it, but it's on the wall back here behind us. And it's that idea of stilling the mind that just like when you look at water you can't see what's underneath that water if the wind is ruffling the top of that water but when you can still the top of the water and look down you can often see the fish or the rocks or what's happening and our mind is the same way we get a distorted picture when like chris said there's too much going on and we feel like we're constantly being bombarded so if we can disengage from that and focus on just our body. This is, again, one of the reasons yoga can be helpful for people. We strive for that as you move to focus on your body and your breath solely. But if walking is the way you choose to do that, it can really help you to um, open that mind and see things that you might not, you might go back to your desk and realize, oh, why did I not think of offering that for that client, right? Um, or I could do that this way. And so it can really open up avenues for you. I just heard a study, you, you might heard this, Jason, of, um, it's called uh, Awesome Walking, like walking in awe. And there's yeah. two groups and they only had to walk 15 minutes a week, but one group was instructed to notice those tiny things around them that they had looked at a hundred times, but never noticed. And the other group just went for a walk, no instruction. And mm -hmm. they were shocked at the, um, the improvement in attitude just in that small uh, mindfulness, you know, it's just like that. Well, think about it, you know, look, look at children, where do they, they notice all the small things and we're walking as zombies and there's <laughs> all of these things happening around us that are, really are wonderful if we choose again to notice them. It's a choice. And you could learn a lot from kids, just the way they play, the, what the things that they notice, the questions that they ask. And they really have a beginner's mindset. As adults, we become very closed and feel like we have all the answers, but we don't even know the right questions to ask. And I challenge a lot of my clients that way in terms of, you know, when they 
are very definitive in their beliefs. And um, I love what you just said. Yeah, you, you, you know, you, uh, your mind, the quality of your mind, the, the quality of your observations, right? And I think also the company you keep. You're with positive people, people, hopeful people, optimistic people. You'll you'll become the the average of those five, right? And if you're around a bunch of people who are just cranky, they're miserable, this sucks, life sucks, the world sucks, everything's on fire, there's no perspective there. There's none. And, you know, history repeats itself. Everyone's just got to stay calm, stay in the pocket, you know, uh, you know, and that's, it's really the truth. And so, uh, and when everyone says unprecedented and that, that's not true, you know, you, <laughs> this is, we've had issues and pandemics and, issues with government for many, many years. Uh, you don't even have to look back that far. Um, and so it's, we, history is a flat circle. So I, I think it, yeah, it, I, I love that you said that about walking. It's uh, for me, I, I put on a, uh, an audible, which is great. Uh, I always put on my Vita, sometimes University of Audible, because I, I listen to so many books while I'm walking and I feel like uh, I've learned so much uh, through that process. So I look forward to it. Uh, it's been a new habit I developed during the pandemic as well. Um, that I never, I didn't even know where Cuba Marsh was. I drove by it, but I never knew where, yeah. where I, I was afraid I'd get lost. All right. I want to, I want to thank our, uh, we're, we're out of time here. I want to be respectful of everybody's time and we'll try and wrap it up quickly here. I wanted to thank Jason and Sandy for uh, joining us and there, if you, those who probably haven't looked in the chat, but there's lots of positive comments and things. I think the group really enjoyed Thank you. Uh, the, the conversation that we all had here today. Um, I have one request, one reminder, one request. As I said, next month, the solopreneur meeting is on tax, tax planning for your small business. And I jokingly said at the beginning, I think lots of us solopreneurs don't do tax planning. And maybe we should, we'll hear a little bit about if we should be doing that. And then in March, uh, Alyssa is going to help us with uh, video and using video in your business as a marketing tool, whether that be on your website or social media or whatever. And, and she and I chatted about it. And I said, now, keep in mind, we're solopreneurs. We don't have a marketing department. We don't have, you know, photographers on staff or videographers or whatever. I mean, think of it, please, Alyssa, from the standpoint of I got my iPhone and it's me. So where do we go very from here? Very basic, very easy. Yeah. So those are our next two topics. But my request is, what would you like to see, you know, April, May, June? What are some of the other topics? And it is, I'll be honest with you, the way I've come up with topics, I am selfish. I'm a solopreneur. I want to learn how to do things with video. I want to know if I should be doing tax planning for my business because I'm not. So if there's things that you'd like to know about, send me an email and uh, we'll, we'll find somebody to kind of guide a conversation or if we just want to share things. I know there were a few requests about um, picking a topic where we just sh share how we attack a certain situation or problem or challenge or whatever in our business. So uh, please send me those ideas and we'll try and get them queued up for uh, future meetings. Great. Perfect. Amaya, anything else that I missed? I, said, I, I wrote it in the chat again. That was wonderful. Thank you guys. Thank you everyone. Um, especially Sandy and Dr. Ness. And um, again, just get your super raffle tickets. And um, as well as be one of our member spotlights for February. All right. Thanks, everybody. Great Thank to you. see you. Thank you, guys. Thanks Thank for having you. me. Take care. See you guys. Have a good week. Bye. 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 Bye.